There are a lot of great community tank mate options, many of which are commonly known fish. I mean, you got your neon tetras, fancy guppies, dwarf grommies, and etc. However, there are a lot of great options that seemingly go underneath the radar of many aquarists, whether it be due to the lack of information about them online, rarity in actually finding them, or other factors that may keep them out of the spotlight. But today, I thought we would change that. Today, we're going to be talking about my top 10 list of the most underrated community aquarium fish. This is a ranking list, so fish towards the bottom of the list I consider to be less underrated than fish towards the top of the list. Also, just keep in mind that this is my personal opinion, and it shouldn't be taken too seriously if you disagree. So, with all that out of the way, let's get into the rankings. At number 10, we have aquarium snails. These can include anything from nearite to mystery snails. These guys are going to be an easy and helpful addition to a community tank environment. Each snail has a different primary function that benefits a tank. Nearite snails are most suited for eating algae. They are also known for being excellent algae eaters on the glass of an aquarium. They prefer green algaes like green spot algae, which can be rather difficult to remove. Mystery snails are going to be great for eating hair algae, where they are often lower in the tank. Other snails will even help keep a tank substrate clean by eating the detritus in the substrate. Pretty much every cleaning job has a snail for that role. Assassin snails have even evolved to tackle a completely different role. Assassin snails will eat smaller pest snails that are in a tank, which many people find to be incredibly annoying and even downright frustrating. I put snails in this spot simply because they're snails. People don't pay much attention to them because they will never be the centerpiece of the tank. They aren't overly flashy, exciting, or even appealing. Because of this, not too many people will take them into consideration for their tanks, which I think is undeserved. I personally really enjoy black nearite snails. I found them to be very entertaining watching them graze on the glass of the tank. And of course, they helped keep everything nice and clean. So I'd say, if you're considering having a low bio load little helper to add to a tank, consider a snail. In the ninth spot, we have female betas. Now I chose female betas specifically because they are frequently overlooked by the males, despite usually being more peaceful. Males will often have much more flashy fins and colors. Pretty much when you go to the pet store and you see all those betas in those cramped cups, those are going to be your males. Females are very beautiful as well though. They typically have shorter fins, which actually allows them to move much more freely and easily compared to their male counterparts. What female betas really excel at is being part of a community setup. There are full on tanks filled with female betas that are called beta sorority tanks. That's just not something you can do with the males unless you have an absolutely massive tank. Even then, those guys will still be constantly flaring and fighting with each other, so you'd have to be ready for that. In short, the females are a lot easier to pair with other betas and other fish in general while still being very beautiful. So for that, I think they need much more love. This one may confuse some people, but for the eighth spot, I picked the feeder guppy. Now, feeder guppies are pretty much just your typical fancy guppies that have not specifically been bred for a certain color. While that may make them sound rather bland and plain, the males get a very beautiful and unique set of colors. I have seen many males with red, blue, yellow, orange, green, and even purple coloration. And more often than not, the males will get a wide combination of these colors, which I honestly think makes them more beautiful than your typical guppy. 
These guys are on the list because as their name says, they are often used to feed larger predatory fish. Which makes sense as these guys are really cheap, like dirt cheap. But I think more people should use them in actual aquariums. They are a fun, easy fish to keep and especially breed and in general, I think they deserve more attention. Just don't let them overpopulate. In the seventh spot, we have the epistogrammas. Now I know there are tons of species of epistogrammas out there, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna lump them all together because I think the species as a whole is pretty underrated. I think a lot of this is due to the ram cichlids usually being more common and less costly compared to the epistogrammas. With both of these fish pretty much sharing the same role as a good choice for a centerpiece fish for a community tank, it does make sense one would fall short. Epistogrammas have so many stunning colors out there that it's insane. They're fun to breed and generally a great fish. I will say I don't think they are super underrated just because I know there's a decent community out there that loves these fish. So I thought the number seventh spot was fair. In the sixth spot, we have the rosy red minnows. Now these guys are another feeder type fish. So they are super cheap and are more often than not used to feed other fish. However, I think these guys are a great addition to a cold tank. So yeah, they can't really thrive in a heated tank, but rather a non-heated tank. They only get to six centimeters, so they aren't gonna be a fish that contributes a large bio load. For that reason, and the fact that they like cold water, they are one of the few actually good goldfish community tank mates, which if you watched my most popular video on the channel, at least for now, you'll know I don't think goldfish are a good community tank fish overall. These guys are pretty finicky though, as they're usually kept in pretty bad conditions at the pet store, but they are really cheap at the end of the day. Most people don't give them the proper chance to live out their days, so for that reason, I think they deserve the sixth spot. In the fifth spot, we have the white cloud mountain minnow. These guys are definitely an underrated fish. A lot of people don't really know that these fish even exist and not too many pet stores actually carry them. But I think these guys are a great little fish. They are another cold water species and they're even smaller than the rosy reds, only getting to a max size of four centimeters. Another plus to these guys are their price they're usually priced around $2 a fish, which is a very fair and affordable price, especially for their size. They have some pretty solid coloration too. They have those red tail fins, that darker body with the white stripe in their center, and just in general look very cool. These guys also have long finned and gold variants, which is always a plus. Pretty much these guys are just great they'll do fine with other nano cold water species like the rosy reds, aren't too difficult to keep, and in general deserve more attention. In the fourth spot, we have the pearl garami. Man, I always seem to be talking about my garamis, but this is a fish that I think is way too underrated. I have no idea why that is. These fish are absolutely beautiful, Seriously, one of my favorite garamis. Their bodies are covered with all those little white spots. They have that striking black stripe at their sides, and they even have red underbellies. Seriously, what's not to love about that color palette? They are a bit of a larger fish, getting up to a max size of roughly five inches or 12 centimeters. For that, they do need a bit more space, I'd say having one for every 30 gallons is pretty needed. I will say I think part of the reason why these guys get seemingly left out of the spotlight is because of the amount of grommies out there. I mean, you got your honey grommies, 
your standard dwarf grommies, opaline grommies, and etc. The pro grommies, just more often than not, are less common compared to these other grommies, which I think results in them not being as talked about. The other thing too, is that in the pet stores, these guys might not be as flashy as the previously mentioned standard dwarf grommies. Whatever the case, the pearl grommy is a beautiful fish that deserves more attention in the hobby. In the third place, we have the Celestial Pearl Danio. Now, I know they have a bunch of different names, but however you call them, they are an amazing nano fish. Starting off, their colors are striking. The orange fins with that black patterning, the dark navy colored body filled with little white spots, and their yellow underbellies just create a gorgeous little fish. I seriously think these guys are one of the prettiest fish in all of the hobby, no joke. Now, when I say these guys are a nano fish, I really mean it. They only get to a max size of two, maybe two and a half centimeters, which is an inch. This is a really, really small fish at the end of the day. It does make it a little bit challenging for tank mates as most other fish would view them as a meal, but with other similarly sized fish, they do great. I think these guys get so overlooked due to their extremely small size. It can be admittedly hard to appreciate all their beauty and markings when they themselves are only two centimeters. A lot of pet stores in general will not carry these guys, so there's also that. In the second place, we have the Borneo Sucker Loach. Now this is one that I think a lot of people have never even heard of because there is seriously a lack of information about these guys online and on YouTube. The Borneo Sucker Loach is pretty much the smaller cousin to the Hillstream Loach, which is mainly why I think they kind of get overlooked. And while I do still prefer the Hillstream Loach, I think the Borneo has some factors in their favor. For one, they are smaller than the Hillstreams, which can be a plus in smaller takes, takes or for bio load hill streams can also be more aggressive compared to borneos so there is also that really both of these fish have a similarly shaped body with them almost looking like stingrays however i think where most people favor the hill stream is due to their more striking colors hill streams have more of a yellow color with all sorts of black stripes and dots all along them Borneos are primarily brown with yellow spots all along them. Both are pretty, but I do see why hill streams are often deemed prettier. Still though, I think Borneos barely get any spotlight, and I think that needs to change. They really are a cool fish, and they are a huge benefit to smaller planted tanks. Finally, in the first place, for the most underrated community aquarium fish, we have the Phoenix Rasbora. Now this is another fish that I don't think a lot of people even know exist. Phoenix Rasbora are a nano species of Rasbora that only get up to two and a half centimeters, or once again, that's an inch. They have a striking orange color that can be a bit of a darker hue in their face region. They also have various black splotches along their body. This all comes together to create a beautiful little nano fish that looks stunning against live plants. Really, I think these guys are another case of a fish being overshadowed by another species. In this case, I think the chili resbora are more often a more common species that fills this role. Chili Rasbora do look very similar to Phoenix Rasbora, but they have some differences. For one, their black pattern usually is just one longer black splotch compared to the Phoenix Rasbora's multiple black splotches. They also have generally more of a red base color. At the end of the day, both of these fish are very similar, to the point where I've even seen pet shops mislabel them. 
However, despite this, I have seen very little information on the Phoenix Resbora, which I think is unfair. For some reason, all of the spotlight goes to the Chili Resbora when both of these fish look absolutely stunning. I love my Phoenix Resbora. I love you. So, for that, I think the Phoenix Resbora is the most underrated community aquarium fish. So that was my look at the top 10 most underrated community aquarium fish in all of the hobby. Did I leave any fish off this list that I should have included, or did I get a good selection? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I enjoyed making this list, so let me know if you'd like to see a part two in the future. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see all you guys in the next video. Take care.